So today DxO are launching Viewpoint version 5, and if you've not heard of Viewpoint before, it's essentially a, a standalone application for correcting geometry and perspective and things like that in your photos. It's not something that I use personally a huge amount because I already use DxO Photolab and it has a subset of these tools in it. But if you're somebody who is going to have this use case a lot, or maybe you're using something like Lightroom and you want better geometry and perspective correction tools, then Viewpoint could make a lot of sense and it has a Lightroom plugin, for example. Personally, I don't shoot a lot of architecture photos, but if I did, and if that was my primary use case, well, I'd probably consider a tilt shift lens. And if you're not familiar with the tilt shift lens, it gives you a couple of the movements that were available on large format cameras. But large format cameras are the best way to explain how they work, I suppose. You have the film holder at the back, you have the front plate with the lens attached to the front, and they're connected by bellows. But the two can be moved independently of each other. And that means that you can change the angle of one compared to the other, or the position, so you can move the lens up. This changes the angle of the light coming through and how it hits the film plane. And a very common use case for this, for example, is to correct for perspective. So if you're stood at the base of a building and you're shooting upwards, your vertical lines are all going to be converging to a point somewhere in infinity probably, but they'll be wonky. And having a front movement allows you to shift the lens upwards and change that angle coming through the uh, the lens and make them look vertical. And you can do that actually in the camera. Very, very interesting. So if people are really interested in this, then they tend to buy tilt shift lenses, but they're very expensive. So if it's something you only do occasionally, this is where something like Viewpoint can come in and be very, very useful. It's particularly interesting to me for street photography because technically I'm taking a lot of architectural photos, lots of buildings, and yet, that's not my primary focus and honestly I don't want to shoot street with a tilt shift lens. <laughs> it just sounds really difficult, not to mention expensive. And a lot of the mirrorless camera uh, mounts at the moment don't actually have dedicated tilt shift lenses. I think Nikon's is still an F mount lens. So it's an interesting piece of software. I shoot a lot of film. My film cameras and lenses typically have more distortion than modern cameras and lenses do and obviously have no automatic corrections. And then I'm scanning it with a modern camera, but with an older macro lens, which has its own distortion. So I'm getting wobbly lines sometimes and being able to force those, uh, the parallel verticals into being actually vertical. It's a really easy way of being able to correct for that and being able to adjust distortion. There's a bunch of different tools in Viewpoint for that. But I'm gonna take a quick look at the ones that I personally use most often quickly now, uh, and maybe touch a little bit on the latest feature that they've introduced in this version, which is something that I'm less experienced with, so I haven't got a ton of examples, but it is a really, really interesting use case for this software, and that is the new, what's it called? Reshape Fusion, which is essentially localized perspective and geometry correction. Very interesting. Let's go and take a look at some examples. So to start with, we're going to take a look at the traditional use case for Viewpoint, which is for architectural photos. I don't take a huge amount of these, but this is a very common use case and people who do this sort of photography seem to really like this software. Now, I personally come across this more doing street photography, but I found this photo lying around. It's a lovely old building that unfortunately has looked like this for a very long time. It would be a really interesting photo location if it wasn't for this horrible billboard and all the other crap that Cardiff Council leave around on the streets, including this lovely wonky pole here. But uh, as you can see on this photo, it does have a bit of a uh, uh, bit of a slant going here uh, and a little bit over here. This is just due to the perspective on the building. So. I'm going to use the Force Verticals tool, which is the one I use the most uh, in Photolab, in fact. And I'm just going to find a consistent vertical and I'm just going to 
put that line against it. And I'm going to do the same over here, but I'm going to do it on the corner of the building here because this is the most obvious one. There's another one over off to the right over here, but it should pick it up fine from this one. I'm just going to apply that. So you can see how it's warped the photo. It has pulled the top of the image out to counter that perspective shift. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, so this was taken on the Mamiya uh, 645, which means it's a 4 by 3 image. So I'm just going to crop it down to uh, somewhere around here. There's a couple of people down there, actually. Let's see if I can keep them in. I think I'm going to lose a guy's leg. Uh, and just up to about here. And I don't care about the extra space on the top. So, nice and straight. It's there's no there's nothing particularly wrong with the original image. I would be perfectly happy with that. I don't mind that perspective uh, effect where you get the sort of disappearing lines or the converging lines that indicate it was taken from a lower angle. But this is a perfectly nice photo. It's done a really good job of straightening out all of those verticals. And for people who do more architectural photography, this is something that they tend to like. This isn't a particularly dramatic shift in this photo, and I think the effect is quite subtle, and it's come out looking really good. Now, if only this building could actually be restored at some point, that would also be rather nice. Although I do quite like this hedge here. Here's another quick example, another color image, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to uh, use these force vertical parallels and I'm going to use it to fix a bit of the distortion on this image. It's not really something that you need to do for a lot of these sorts of photos because people are actually used to seeing pictures that look like this now because people don't shoot with large format cameras so much. This is something that was more easily modified in the past when taking the photo. So it's not a huge issue, but it does make the image look in my opinion, slightly better. And it's curious in this image because the right hand side is very much straight and the left hand side, even with the windows on the same level, is starting to slant much more dramatically. And so if we just straighten that, it's looking really good. I'll apply an auto crop and bring it back in. And overall, I quite like the change. It's quite subtle. You can see it's warped the shape of this window very slightly on the right. And over here on the left, it has just brought everything out a little bit more as well. Overall, it's a nice effect and the photo looks good like this, but I don't necessarily mind it as it was before either. The only thing I would say is that in the before form of the picture, it does have an effect that makes it look like you haven't got your horizon level because this left hand side here, which is quite a prominent part of the photo, does look wonky whereas the right hand side does not. And in the modified version, it looks more consistent across the frame. One other use case for software like this is for leveling the horizon. Now, I feel like I'm pretty good at nailing the horizon line on most photos, but it can be very subtle sometimes. And I've always liked DxO's tool for this. So you just use these lines again, but you use the horizon tool, you pick it on the left and on the right. I'm just going to use the level of the C. This is the easiest way to demonstrate it. And you can see that I was very slightly off. Not by much, but uh, considering that I was on a film camera, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I have noticed on modern cameras, like on my Panasonic, that the horizon level indicator has a little degree of inaccuracy in it. And so you do often need to correct your photos afterwards. One of the new tools that's been added in this version of viewpoint is the reshape fusion tool. So this allows you, or it has at least been expanded and this allows you to do localized changes. So this photo is a fairly good example. I don't know why, but this building on the left appears to be leaning slightly to the right and yet nothing else appears to be doing the same in the other direction. Probably a perspective trick, but also maybe it could fall over at any moment. But this is easily fixed using the new reshape fusion thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a sort of mid-sized grid. I'm going to pick a point around there. And then what you can change is this propagation slider down here. So with none, it's just that single point, but you can change its area of effect. This is really useful 
because it means you can move the whole building in quite a logical way. So I'm going to keep the slider sort of around here. So I'm only going to be affecting the building itself and not coming down to this area with the bollards. And then I'm going to set this to the move version because you can do uh, move, rotate or scale. And I'm just going to shift this building very slightly back towards the border of the image. It was a bit too much. Somewhere about there. And now if we apply that, we can look at the difference that that has made. So as you can see, it's moving just that portion on the left hand side of the picture. It's not affecting anything else. And the building now looks slightly less wonky. Now as viewpoint is essentially uh, emulating a lot of the characteristics of movements in a camera setup. So something like a tilt shift lens, it also has a miniature effect. So it doesn't do anything about increasing the depth of field because that's not something you can do in post. You have to do that in pre uh, when you're taking the photo. But it does have the ability to create that miniature diorama effect that you can do using things like tilt shift lenses or movements on the front of larger format cameras. And it's kind of an interesting use case. Now, this isn't something I do a lot, but this tool is quite good at it. And it does have some really nice customizability. So I'm just going to make the uh, this herd of cattle look more miniature. I'm going to adjust the strength of it a little bit. I don't want it hugely powerful. And I can change the type of blur as well. Having the option of different uh, aperture blade counts, very interesting. It does allow you to give it more of a retro effect. And I'm kind of happy with how that's looking. Let's apply that. So it's a very interesting effect. It can take a photo that is frankly quite dull with its infinite depth of field here and make it slightly more interesting and engaging. It does give it that sort of effect of having used a macro lens to shoot a small model instead. Situational use, not something I do a lot, but it is nice to have. This isn't new in this version of Viewpoint, but uh, I figured I'd highlight it because it's actually a really nice implementation of this effect. Well, that's about it for my quick-ish preview of Viewpoint version 5. Obviously, I don't have the best array of example photographs because I don't shoot the main genre that this tool is useful for. I do think it has a great use case for film photography in particular, but I am usually quite happy with the subset of tools that I've got in uh, Photolab version 8, and that's what I personally use. But there's definitely some other use cases for this out there. And there's probably other YouTubers who've got much better sets of examples. So do go and check out their videos as well. I know DxO have some ambassadors who do shoot this type of uh, photography a lot, and they've got some really good examples. I did see some of them on the presentation that I was given. They're well worth going and checking out. But if you're not sure, they have a free trial available. Uh, there's a download link below, probably on the screen. That's an affiliate link. You don't have to click it. Uh, DxO don't pay me to make these videos. I do it just because I like looking at the software and things in general. I like learning about new things and I do personally use some of their software. So it's of personal interest to me in the first place. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Now, if you're not a subscriber here already, uh, please do consider subscribing if you found this video at all useful. If you'd like to see more of my videos in the future because YouTube is weird and doesn't show videos to people otherwise. If you're interested in DxO software in particular, well, I made a video a few weeks back about Photolab version 8. I think that would probably be of interest to you. See you next time.